Uh, Ethereum actually is centrally controlled. Consensus basically runs it out of New York and you know the insiders own a ton of it and they created it and they sold it through an illegal unregistered security offering back in the day. Uh, and so they actually have like incredible talking points. Think about like the, the Republican machine or the Democratic machine getting their talking points and you hear the same talking heads say the same thing. So what they've tried to pull off in the last few years to say that there's like there's Bitcoin, Ethereum and altcoins trying to claim that Ethereum is not an altcoin. But it obviously is because it's it's already a broken experiment. Um, essentially, the the token that they created to use in their world computer was like the meme a few years ago. Uh, ether, ether, I guess is, is we call it ether, whatever. Um, the incentives of using that, if the price goes up, it, come, it becomes more expensive to actually use the system. So the, as it grows, it becomes more unusable, which is why they're getting off of proof of work in the start in the first place. Their consensus mechanism was similar to Bitcoin's historically, and now they're moving to proof of stake. The problem with moving to proof of stake is proof of stake is inherently centralizing. You're literally talking about giving the rewards to the people that own the most coins. And you're also talking about anytime you have proof of stake, by definition, you have governance. Bitcoin as a proof of work protocol does not need governance, does not have governance. Every single proof of stake uh, system has governance, must have governance, must have governance, must have people making decisions about how it runs. So it's again, inherently centralizing over time. So it's not even about like where it is on a spectrum today, whether it's like super decentralized or super you know decentralized, it's that the second derivative, the direction in which it's moving is always going to be centralizing over time. So the only way that Ethereum actually exists in the long term is if it deliberately seeks to be co-opted by the existing system, by banks and by governments. Um, and you can see them playing that out, right? They're super tight with World Economic Forum. They take investment from JP Morgan, from the Saudi government, you know, they're really just trying to like get ingrained in the existing system as deeply as they possibly can. And so Ethereum and all their backers like Andreessen Horowitz and, and you know, all the rest and, and all the banks and all the government folks, they have common cause to try to promote altcoins and in particular Ethereum because it's the biggest altcoin contra Bitcoin. So it's basically really is Bitcoin against the world. But, you know, luckily, Bitcoin has all of the people. There's this funny thing about the uh, the voices in the space. Uh, it appears that there are a lot of crypto, non-Bitcoin crypto voices or altcoin voices because they have so many of these projects and it's so easy for these people to use marketing of unregistered securities and quick time to liquidity when you can dump it on retail via these unregistered, unregulated exchanges. So it seems like there's this vibrant, huge community, but really it's an inverted pyramid. At the top, you have a ton of people talking about crypto and altcoins, but very little community underneath it. Bitcoin's the opposite. There's very few spokespeople, very few people that can actually talk, you know, for Bitcoin. Nobody would actually like accept someone claiming to speak for Bitcoin. And then this massive community around the world that loves Bitcoin, that works on Bitcoin, that evangelizes Bitcoin, and that uses Bitcoin every single day uh, to store value and to send value around the world. So it's just this uh, this moment in time, again, where it's just kind of like online gambling was in the aughts, where it's just outside the reach of regulators and they're able to do these, these essentially like pump and dump marketing schemes, these Bitcoin affinity scams uh, with these altcoins. And this moment in time will pass and we'll look back on it and say, well, that was that was gross. And a lot of people ruined their reputations forever uh, participating in that. But, uh, you know, I think it will pass.